You're very welcome back. Now, a diet that avoids processed mm. foods and is based on eating whole foods only can contribute to a healthier, happier you. And in her latest book, Half Hour Hero, Roz Purcell offers practical advice on clean eating with easy to follow recipes. Cook and author Roz Purcell joins us now. Good morning. Morning. Hi, Thank Roz. you for battling your way through the Dublin Marathon traffic. I to know, get here. yeah. So I live in the bang centre of the city, uh, so it's kind of hard getting out today. But um, I have to say, well done to everyone who's done the marathon today because it's such an achievement. And usually I go out and I support everyone and I scream for them. I get very emotional watching it too, actually. Yeah, you yeah, invest in it. Yeah, you really do, especially, you know, the ones at the end. You're like, come on, I know. you're almost there. That was, it, it, it is yeah. quite the spectacle, oh, though. I love watching it. So, and the majority um, of people are there raising money for oh, a various exactly, cause. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about your book. Yes. I love the 80-20 rule. So this, yeah. maybe you can explain the 80-20 rule because I think there's a lovely line in it where you say, look, with the greatest intentions of everybody, nobody's good 100% of the time. No. So what's the 80-20 rule? Do you so have? I think I spent so long um, as a model doing diets all the time and I used to find it, it was almost a little bit soul-destroying trying to be good 100% of the time because yeah. we're all human. It's kind of impossible, it's not really. going to happen. Yes. So then when you would fall off the wheel, you get this overwhelming sense of feeling of guilt mm. um, and it kind of turned into a vicious circle. I think a lot of people are aware that if anyone's listening um, right now, Food is this kind of vicious circle if you have a bad relationship with it where you're like, you're really good, then you're really bad, then you you get worse and worse, you kind of spiral. So with 80-20 approach is 80% of the time you're cooking your meals from scratch, you're being quite mindful of what you're eating um, and you're just avoiding processed food. Mm. And 20% of the time you're allowing yourself those treats that you really enjoy, those things that you know you find that they kind of play in your mind a little yeah. bit and you enjoy it and you move on and you don't get Cause guilty. Because I, I think you're right and I think that Unhealthy food is a wide, it covers a wide range of things, mm -hmm. but it's essentially processed food. It's essentially processed food. Because you, you can know, cook you a burger from scratch. Yeah, like when I go home and I might put on my Insta story, like, you know, my aunt makes amazing lemon mousse or eclairs. I'm like, yeah, but she's made them from scratch with love. Yeah. It's so different than going up, picking up a package in the supermarket, you yeah. know? So food that you wouldn't necessarily be down with or try and avoid is, I, I know one of the nutritionists that we use uh, on the show, Heather Leeson, often says, the less packaging involved yeah. in a child's lunchbox, the better. <laughs> oh, big time. So and it is about all of that raw, unpackaged food. Yeah, and as well, like, if you're looking at just something you could even adapt into your lifestyle is just checking the back of um, the pack of a pack of a food or whatever the ingredients list the ones with the least amount of ingredients are probably the ones you want to go for mm -hmm. so you know if you look on the back and there's like such a long list just, just don't even bother and it's actually categorized by um how much of each ingredient is in in the list so if you know you see sugar in the top five or six you know there's probably a lot gone into it mm -hmm. i love as well that you say that and, I, and i'm terrible for this is this to experiment oh yeah, it's, no. Because I, I cut out, like, I they I always slag myself, but they slag me in the shower so I don't do fruit. Of course I eat fruit. I eat apples and bananas mm -hmm. and all that. But don't discount an entire food group because you, without, without having tried Based them. on one experience. Yeah. yeah, and you know what? I think it's really hard, particularly people who work in, like, large office groups and stuff. Everyone's coming in each day being like, I'm trying, I'm on a new diet, I'm vegan or I'm <laughs> ketogenic or whatever. And we're constantly being fed all these new diets yeah. and like, they're amazing for you, the best thing for you, you know. And not everything suits one person. There mm. is no real perfect diet. Everyone's individual mm. and that's what kind of makes us human. So I think it's really important to experiment on yourself. What foods suit you, what don't. There's some really healthy foods that don't uh, work well with my with you know me and I avoid them but you know so it's just it's really playing around it really is on a body. case by case yeah. basis isn't it and knowing what works for you what yeah. would you say to viewers this morning maybe mums dads um, you know busy with young children and they're thinking I would love to be healthy but I don't have the time yeah, you see, okay, so why I wrote Because you do hero, hear that a lot, don't yeah, you? It's the why, most yeah, trodden it's, out it really is. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the reason I wrote Half I Hero is because the biggest excuse I got from people was I don't have the time, firstly. And then secondly, when it came to health food, people assume health food... I don't food, have the money. Yeah, I don't have the money or it's not accessible. Mm -hmm. So people assume eating healthy is your kale and quinoa salads when it's really not. And I think there was like a huge generation about four years ago year ago of food bloggers who came out being like, you know, you need to activate those nuts, you need to soak them overnight and you need to dehydrate them. No, like it made health food seem so exclusive and it's just not. It's everyday food that you can pick up in the supermarket like oats, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I really wanted to write a book that was quick using really accessible ingredients and that wasn't going to like 
You know, and these are ingredients that aren't necessarily yeah. newfangled foods. They are no, basic no. foods that everyone will yeah. be perfectly familiar with. And as well, there a lot of them are, I suppose, dishes that we're familiar with, like my sweet and sour crispy cod. Like, you know, how many times yeah. did you've ordered that as a kid yeah, or whatever? Yeah. Or, you know, curries and, you know, cottage pies, things that we're used to cooking that are nostalgic, that we really love and they're comforting, but just made in a little bit of a healthier way. Mm -hmm. But these are familiar ingredient, ingredients. Like, you have, you have a list, which I think, again, is great. You have your... Your top 20 food yeah, my heroes. Hero Things foods. you go what to. What are your hero foods? But I'm looking at them like there's dark chocolates, there's eggs, feta cheese, courgettes. Yeah. Beautiful so stuff. So basically, my hero foods were made from my followers. I did so many surveys over the past two years asking people what were their top five ingredients that they always have in their kitchen yeah. press mm -hmm. or the ones that they kind of always write top of their shopping list. And that's what made my top 20 hero foods. These are the foods that people have in their press and they're familiar with. And we should be eating more of. Yeah. Or, you know, ones that just, they're local. They're accessible um, and, you know, they're going to benefit you. And they're the affordable. Energy. Yeah. You see, something like courgettes, if, if I was in a restaurant and I saw them, yeah. I would order them. Mm -hmm. But I'd never think of cooking them. Oh, but they're amazing. Yeah. You they're know, so versatile. filled with, with the feta cheese. Yeah. Some, they're amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can grow them. Yeah. I think as well, it's really important to kind of work in what's in season in Ireland. We're so lucky. We have such yeah. fantastic producers here. And I suppose a lot of time people always say to me, I'm a surprise, you're not vegan, you know, and I'm like, well, we're so lucky here. We have fantastic producers and mm. I always go for quality, I'm quite mindful where I get things and traceability. And I think we are so lucky that, you know, our supermarkets here and our producers are so on top of that. Mm -hmm. Have you replaced, I'm just looking at your hero foods here, have you replaced, because um, a lot of my friends have as well, right. normal milk with almond milk? Yes, I have. And that's just because if, for me, I find that it suits my body better. Okay. When I have traditional milk, I just get really crampy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. so it's a digestive thing. Yeah, for me, it's a digestive thing. Um, and sometimes I find my skin breaks out a little bit. But, you know, that's personal again. Yeah. But I suppose when I'm writing a cookbook, these are recipes I make myself. So that's why I would use nut milk and kind of suggest it a lot of the time as well. And nut butter, very common as well in loads of the recipes. Well, listen. I can eat jars, jars of now, nut butter. This is a new one I made, yeah. nut butter. Nut butter, like peanut butter, almond butter. So it's like peanut yeah. butter, except on, it's much less oily. I'm in, I'm in. It's I'm quite in. dry, isn't it? Oh, so it's just well, about it getting used to the <laughs> yeah. texture. Yeah, now you see, I used to hate peanut butter, um, but then I lived in America for a while modelling and then I became addicted to it, so <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I tend to make it myself and you can make it yourself to save money and yeah, it's quite addictive though, I will warn you all. I'm hungry now. Yeah. Okay, well the book is out. The book is out, Half Our Hero, and it's available nationwide, so... Um, Right, right actually, beside Simon's book. I was, yeah, I was, yeah, I'm not For different parts Simon's, of the week, maybe. But I maybe. was actually, I was doing a signing yesterday in Limerick and one of the best things happened, a man came up to me and he's probably the same age as my dad in his 60s and he was like, I've never cooked before, I've been married for 35 years and his daughter was with him. She was like, yeah, he's never cooked dinner before and he's like, but I heard you on the radio and you were talking about how easy and simple it is and how you almost look at cooking and baking as being therapeutic and I have a really high stressful job so I got the book and he's like, I have been cooking every single day. He's like, I love it. I can't stop. I can't stop baking. Good and his job. daughter it's was like, like a new hobby. he made, he, she was listing all the foods he made and he's like, and I have all the ingredients for your uh, sweet potato peanut curry later. And I was like, isn't that just great? You know, that's and great that's feedback. like the best thing you can hear. Well, yeah. that's who you wrote for. That's who yeah. for. Thank you, Ross. Thanks, Ross, for, thanks for having Thank on. you. <laughs> Pleasure. Now, this morning, we have three signed copies of Half Hour Hero to give three lucky viewers. Head over to our Facebook page at Sunday AM TV 3 to enter. Now, up next, this week's top telly highlights, including a scary movie perfect for the bank holiday weekend. Ooh.